But in reality, the, if there's no research of time, this is a big, big problem. As I explained at the beginning, the whole Chinese medicine, the Yellow Emperor and all this, is only for the research of time. So that people can fulfill their heavenly years, live to be a hundred and then go, or live their life to the fullest and then go. And their children will live to the fullest, and their children's children will live to the fullest. This is the research of Chinese medicine. It's not solving headaches. Very, very difficult, right. but the responsibility <clears throat> that we have is great. Okay. It's very big responsibility. It's okay. not solving headaches, you know, or back pains, or getting people pregnant. You know, like <clears throat> my patient got pregnant, I'm a winner. It's not about that. This is modern medicine. Modern Chinese, modern Western, doesn't matter. Got the result, I'm the winner. Didn't get the result, I'm the loser. Not at all. You know, we really need to know the concept of Chinese medicine and time and why our life will go on for many generations if we do it right or not. So now we want to understand yin and yang, or what we call the three yin and three yang. And the three yin and three yang is very simple because we summarize them into one. Right? We can divide them, we can summarize them. But it all comes down to one thing, is this circle. This circle, in the ancient time, they call it the Taiji circle. This is the Taiji circle. Right? And there's many, many things. In the book that I'm writing right now, I talk about it from many, many different angles. You know, it's not just one thing. But it uh, comes back to one principle, which is this. So we say we have three yin and three yang, as we talked before, right? The tai yang, shao yang, yang ming, tai yin, shao yin, zhui yin. Uh, so first let's talk about the three yangs. But before we talk about the three yangs, I want to explain a little bit the circle, what it means. <coughs> uh, this uh, circle, or what you call a tai chi circle, is a change of yin and yang. Right? Again, we talk about yin and yang. How does yin and yang change? They change in a circle, in a circular motion, right? We call it the circular motion, yin and yang. Uh, and we learn it also in today's schools, you know, yin change into yang, day change into night, night change into day, right? Kind of thing. <coughs> but what we have here, and just, just to make it easier, I've taken an example of the four seasons. So we have here spring, Summer, fall, and winter. Right? These are the four seasons. So, what happened in the four seasons to, to the energy? What happened in the spring to the energy? The, the energy starts to open up, right? And you can see it, like the plants start to sprout up, right? And then, what happened going forward? You know, we draw it like this, like an arrow. The energy starts to open up. And then when we get to the summer, what happens in the summer? Open up more, right? All the flowers, all the leaves, you see, you look around you, it's all open up, right? So it opens up, right? What happened after the middle of the summer? When we go now towards the fall, what happens to the leaves and flowers? Do they continue to open up? Uh, no, the energy starts to close down, right? the leaves start to fall down. Okay. So we go into the fall stage. Right? After the fall, we go into the winter. And this is like this already for a long, long time. It's not just this year. Right? 100 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, it's still the same. So we're looking for this principle, this rule. So what happened after the fall, going to the winter? Do the leaves start to open up? So what happened to the leaves and to the flowers and everything? They all go down to the ground, or what we call in Chinese medicine, going to storage. Right? They go into storage. So after the middle of winter, when it goes to storage again, then the spring is coming again. So what happened in the spring? The energy starts to open up again, right? So again we have this. And again, the next summer, what happened? Open up again. And the next fall, what happened? Start to close down again. And then in the winter, what happened? Goes to storage. Opens up again to summer, 
goes into storage into winter, open up. This is the same every year. And this happens every day too, right? Middle of the night, then the yang energy start to open up. In the morning, opens up until noon, midday, start to open up more. And then what happened in the afternoon? Does it open up more in the afternoon? No, it starts to close down. But what happened in the evening at night? Goes into storage. And the same happens to us. Remember, we are uniting with heaven. What happens to us at night? Do we wake up in the evening? We don't wake up in the evening. We wake up in the morning. And we start to be very energetic. But then what happened in the afternoon? We start getting tired. And what happened at night? We get really tired. We go back to sleep. The next morning what happened? Get up again. You know, opens up, close down. This is the circular motion, the idea of circular motion. What we're talking about here is this, what we call yang energy. Right? Yin yang. This we call yang energy. The yang energy opening motion. Remember we said we have three yin? Three yin. And we have three yang, right? We have three yin and three yang. We're talking now about the, only the yang. We're not talking about the yin yang, right? Just the yang energy. The three yang has opening motion. It has closing motion. And the Yellow Emperor adds another element, he calls it the pivot. Pivot like when we talk about a door, you know, the door opens, the door closes, and there's a pivot, a hinge, that the door hangs on, that allows it to open and close, right? So we have three elements here for the door. One is opening it, one is closing it, and one is something that helps it. We call it pivot. These are the three yang. The yang energy opens, the yang energy closes. And there's something that helps it to do this action. It's not really a pivot of the door, but it's something that helps it. <clears throat> so the yellow emperor divides this circle with the three yang. Did you, get, did you give them the article that I sent you, or they didn't read it? <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> Maybe yeah. they read some of them, might have read it. Some of them. <laughs> right, so basically, so the first action, from here, from the middle of the winter, going to the middle of the summer, is this closing or opening, we said? Open. Opening, right? This is called Taya. <coughs> this is the first element of the Yang energy. From the middle of the night or the middle of winter, it opens, 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 until it gets to the middle of summer. From here, it starts changing in a circular motion. From the middle of summer to the middle of winter, is it opening or closing? Closing. Closing. This closing motion of the energy is called Yang Ming. <coughs> right? But now the question is, like in Chinese medicine, we always ask these questions to be able to reach to this clock here, which is different. We have these difficulties, like the book of difficulties. It's like, what is this problem? You know, the yang energy is moving, right? We said the yin energy is quiet, right? the yang energy is moving. So the yang energy, the taiyang, opens, 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 opens. When it gets here, why wouldn't it open more? You know, like, just go over there. You know, why would the yang energy start to come back? This, this is where the yellow emperor said, we have another element to help this opening and closing motion. This other element is the third yang, we call Shao Yang, or the pivot. Remember the pivot of the door? The Shao Yang, and I'll just give it to you right up front, is over here. Um, now, in each, each one of these three yangs have qualities, and this is a long lecture by itself. Um, but, and so I'll, I'll save you that, because we don't have much time. But the Shao Yang, is ruled to be what we call the minister of fire. His quality is fire. Soka. Right? It's called fire. Minister of fire or xiang. This is the Shaoyang. Shaoyang is this one. Right? The fire is here, which means it's around the springtime. And what does the fire do? 
to the yang energy? Does it close it down or opens it up? It helps it open, right? Because opening of the yang, like in spring and summer, is the warming up of nature. The flowers get more and more. This is the Shaoyang fire. But you see where the Shaoyang is? It's over here. But now the time, remember Chinese medicine is the medicine of time. The time is passing, right? It's moving along, it's not waiting for us. So we have Shaoyang here at spring or in the morning. And then the, the time is moving, moving, moving. So when we get here, what happened to the Shaoyang? Right? We're moving along. But the Shaoyang is over here. So what happened to the Shaoyang? Is it getting closer and closer or is it getting far away more and more? Uh, which one? Does the, when the time moves, the Shaoyang is over here. As we move, are we getting closer to the Shaoyang or getting away from the Shaoyang? We're getting away from the Shaoyang. So what happens to the Yang energy? when it starts to get away from the fire? Is it getting warmer or colder? It gets colder, right? The closer we get to the fire, it gets warmer. But the farther away we get us from the fire, it gets colder. So what happened to the yang energy when it gets colder? Right? If it gets warmer, it goes up and up. But now if it gets colder, what happens to it? Down. It starts to come down. So the Yellow Emperor rules the Shaoyang as the pivot of the Three Yang. He puts it on this side to help the Taiyang open and to help the Yang Ming close. Because remember, it's not static. The time is moving, right? Every day and night is moving, 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 moving. The Yang energy gets close to the fire, it gets open, open, open. Start to go away from the fire, start to cool down. Get close to the fire, it gets cooled down, right? Warming up, cooling down. This is the three young, what we say in one sentence, summarize it all. all right? Now there are many elements to it, it's not so simple, but this is the, the main idea of it. Right? The organs involved in it, the meridians involved in it, this is all for us to explore. You know, what does it mean that the small intestine and the bladder are here? That the stomach and the large intestine, right? what happens in the stomach when we eat? The food is separated and goes down. And in the large intestine, separate more and goes down in the bathroom. Right? This is the Yang Ming over here. So what happened to the Yang energy at that time? It doesn't go up, it goes down. That's why we can go to the bathroom, for example. So there's many, many implications to it for us to slowly, slowly think about it. You know, we know which meridians, which organs are here. We know which meridians, which organs are here. Then we have to start to do the work, the grinding work, meaning what does it mean in the human body? That's how Chinese medicine works over the centuries. Why is the Yang Ming at this time? When we make a prescription, when we do acupuncture, in classical Chinese medicine, it's called opening a direction <coughs> or making time. Right? In Chinese it's called Kai Fang. Kai Ho. Like make a prescription, it's called Kai Fang, it means open a direction. What does it mean? It's not just to write some herbs. I mean, is it this direction? Is it this direction? Is it this direction? That direction? Is it this time? Or is it this time? This time or this time? This is what we're researching in Chinese medicine. You know, so if someone has constipation, for example, is this a problem here? Or is this a problem? Uh, maybe over here, right, if the energy, but it could also be a problem here too, could also be a problem here, could be many, many different things, but that's what we're coming out from, this is our starting point, we're coming out of here, not from symptoms, you know, constipation, like we learned today, if it's a very big constipation and you're hot and you're thirsty and you sweat and you have big pulse, we call this the Yang Ming disease, so give it Bai Hu Tang or Cheng Qi Tang, this is not, this is it's not Chinese medicine anymore, if we think like this. You have a disease, you have this symptom, you use this. This is not. We have to understand what happens. Then you can use whatever points you find is right. Whatever herbs you think is right. If you understand it. Not, we don't see the symptoms. Oh, headache here, put this point. Shoulder pain here, put that point. Not like this. 
This is not the Chinese mindset. So these are the three yang pattern. But now the problem we have here, this is already 24 hours or four seasons. The whole year is here. So how much time do we have? We have about 20 minutes. If we don't have anyone coming here, then we still have a little time. Uh, okay, so 20 minutes, maybe I can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The problem is here that we have three yin and three yang, I mean three yangs, taking the whole clock. Right? So, where is the yin? Right? I mean, uh, is it only yang energy? We know we have yin yang, it's not just yang energy. So we I'm looking for this, you know. Zhang Zhong Jin. From the Shang Han Lun, this guy. Two thousand years ago. Maybe two, three, four, five hundred years after the Yellow Emperor, writing this other Shang Han Lun. So I'm looking for his help. Like help me. Because I have a problem here. I understand the yang energy opens, I understand the yang energy closes, right? Spring, summer, fall, and winter. But where is the yin here? We all know there's yin and yang. In the Yellow Emperor, they say the sages, they knew the Tao, they follow yin and yang. They didn't say the sages follow the yang. So this is a problem. So, Zhang Zhongjing, he has a concept in his book. It's called the time of solving, uh, you know, we have three yin and three yang. We call them the six uh, spheres. We have a time, right, we're talking about time here, that solves this sphere. The best time to solve this sphere, it's called yu jie shi. Yu jie shi. Yu means want, to want. Jie mm -hmm. means to dissolve, to solve the problem. Shi mm -hmm. means time. Right? The time, the time that it wants to be solved. Every sphere of the three yin, three yang has this time. Right? So the Shao Yang, for example, this pivot for the three yang, his time is over here. The Tai Yang uh, is not like what I said. The time to solve the Tai Yang is over here. You understand that? The time to solve it. How do you say it in Japanese? Shigoruchu. Ah, okay. Shigoruchu. Okay, yeah. we understand. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So the time to solve the Taiyan, in the according to Zhang Zhongjing, the Taiyan is over here, right? In the middle of the day or in the middle of summer. The time to solve the Yang Ming is here in the fall. The time to solve the Shao Yang is here in the spring. But now what happened with the three yin? He said we have time to solve the three yin. And the time to, remember we have tai yin. Uh, can I erase the, yes. some of it? Okay. Yes. We, we understand, uh, so where, where is the winter here in this cycle? The very bottom. Right. Where is the summer? Summer. No. And where is the spring? And the fall? If it's uh, 24 hours, where is midnight? Down. Where is midday, noon? Up. Where is six o'clock in the morning? <laughs> in the morning. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so this is <laughs> this is six o'clock. Uh -huh. It's not nine o'clock like in our watch, mm -hmm. right? Because this is from here to here is twelve hours. It's mm -hmm. not six, right? So this is midnight. This is noon. This is six a.m. This is 6 p.m., right? That's the equivalent of the four seasons, right? The winter, the spring, fall, and this. So now, where are the three yin? We have Tai yin, Shao yin, and Jue yin. Tai yin is from here to here. That's the Tai yin. So where is the Shao yin? The Tai yin is the, what we call, opening of the yin. The Jue yin is the closing of the yin. And the Shao Yin is the pivot of the Yin. So this is the Tai Yin, the opening of the Yin. So where is the pivot 
6 p.m. No. <laughs> no, so we don't have much time. The so <laughs> of the Shaolin is over here. And where is the Jueyin, the closing of the Yin? Oh, we don't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Zhang Zhongjing take the three Yin, put them here. Remember the Tai Yang, Shao Yang, Yang Ming, we did a whole circle. <coughs> take the Yin, it's not a whole circle. You put the three Yin here. Alright, so this has a lot of secrets in it to understand this time, this life. All right. This is very, very important for infertility. Just give me a cue, 10 minutes. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Very, very important. So this is the first one is the Tai Yin. The second one is the Shao Yin. And the third one is the Jui Yin. Okay. Well, now we need to know a little bit more uh, from the Yellow Emperor to understand it. Okay. <coughs> Each one of the three yin and three yang has uh, what they call root energy and manifestation, which is not the same. And it's a little bit difficult, but I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. So each one of them is not just a piece of time, but rather, you know, we, we learn about the five elements, right? The wood, fire, and this. You know, each one has characters, they have different, one controls the other, one gives birth to the other, right? Five elements. So, this five elements is similar. Uh, it has characteristics in these six spheres the three yang and the three yin. It has characteristics. So, we didn't talk about the. Uh, in the Shao Yang, we said it's fire, right? Minister of Fire. That was one of them. The Tai Yang and Yang Ming, we didn't say, it doesn't matter for now, okay? But the three Yin characteristic is the Tai Yin, which is the opening, right? This is called opening. Tai is called Shi Tu. Shi Tu. Shu. Sorry. Yin. Yes, yes, we understand. The Tai Yin is called damp earth. The Shao, which means this is its characteristic, its energy. What it means, it's its energy. The Shao Yin is emperor of fire. Right? Juniper. The Jue Yin is called wind wood. So the wood, fire, earth, we know from the five elements. Damp, uh, emperor, and wind, we don't know so much from the five elements. This is a different issue in the yellow emperor. Uh, so, basically, we just want to talk about this. Remember at the beginning I said the body has two parts. One is called man and heaven unite. The energy of heaven comes into our body. We call this three yin and three yang. The heaven has three yin and three yang. has yin and yang energy. That's why the seasons are changing in heaven. Right? The spring, the fall, the change in heaven. This we have in our body. But we also have the body. The physical body. Remember when we die? This physical body belongs to earth. The muscles, the bones, this thing. So we have the energy or the life force. We have the body too. The body is earth. This one. But body without three yin and without three yang is a dead body. It doesn't matter if you put food next to it, you put air, you give ten, water. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter what you give to it. This is not a living person. When is this a living person? When it has three yin, three yang, or it has yin and yang energy, which is coming from heaven. But the body itself is this part. And this part. Right, two, the, the earth element. Remember, in any even modern Chinese medicine, we learn the earth is the basis. All the flesh is from the earth. 
right? Everything comes from the earth. But the modern Chinese medicine is a, talks a different language. Don't talk about this thing. But you see that this earth has damp. Damp, what is damp? You know what? You know mm -hmm. this? Yes, yes. What is no. damp? Humid, right? How do you get humidity here? How, do, how something becomes humid? Uh, evaporates. Right, how does it evaporate? You have water here. How does this water evaporate? Fire. Right, you put fire. What is fire? It's yang energy. Right. When you add yang energy to it, it starts to evaporate. This we call damp. Now, what is the opposite of this? Dry. Right, how does water become dry? We just say that when you put heat, it becomes damp. So the cup becomes dry, but the water doesn't become dry. The water goes up to the seal. This is not dryness. Uh, this is a long story, but it's a different thing. How does water become dry? How does water stop moving? It becomes like a piece. Ice. Right. So what happened to water when it becomes ice? What happened to the energy in the water? Stops. Uh, right. No, what, what happened to the yang energy? Do we add yang energy to it or do we take out take yang out. energy right you take the yang energy out of the water it becomes dry dry meaning ice it's not flowing anymore then you put yang energy back in the water what happened to the ice start to melt right become water you put more yang, yang energy to it what happens to the water it becomes vapor or damp right this is this thing so what happened to Earth without water. What happened to Earth without water? Like in the desert. Dry. It comes dry. Do we have plants growing in the desert? Nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much. Uh, so if you have Earth and there's no water in it, then nothing can grow. We call this, nothing can grow in this Earth. We call it dead Earth. Right? But you put water in the Earth, then all of a sudden you get plants growing in it, right? But let's say you put ice on the earth. Do you grow plants from that? Also. Right? Because ice is dry water. Dry water can't grow the earth. It has to be water with yang energy in it. If you take the yang energy, this water is not water anymore. It's dry. You put as much ice as you want. Put it on the earth. It doesn't go into the earth. But you add yang energy into it, it melts, then it goes into the earth, then plants come up. Right? So what are we, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about ice? No. We're talking about water with extra yang energy in it. This makes the earth what? Dead or alive? Alive. Right. Then the earth is alive. Right? If you put ice... Is that how you write ice in yes. Japan? You put ice? No, this earth is dead. Even though this is not water. Ice is not water. Ice is dry water. You put damp, the earth becomes alive. Right? The earth by itself is a dead body. But the earth with damp in it is a living body. It's like a live earth that plants grow from that. Right? This is the tie-in. The tie-in is damp earth. Earth with water, with yang energy in it. This is the tie-in. That's how the Yellow Emperor defines the tie-in. But now, let's just think back. Remember we said the yang energy opens up and the yang energy closed down, right? Opens up, do we get tired or we get more energy? In the morning, getting to know, get more energy, right? In the afternoon, what happens to us in the afternoon? Do we get more energy in the evening? No. We, we get more and more tired, more and more tired. Then we get 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. <coughs> and then what happened to us? We have to go to sleep. Right? We don't have to, but a few days without sleeping and then one week, two weeks, then you're dead at the end. But if we go to sleep, we can live many years. Right? But what happened here at the end? The energy goes more and more into storage, more and more into storage. But, but at the end, the yang energy is like this, closed. Remember at midnight it closed. That's the time <coughs> of the tie-in. 
What happened if the earth doesn't get damp? Then it's dead earth, right? So what do we need? What kind of pivot do we need here to make the earth live again? Fire. We need fire. fire. The yellow emperors say we have two fires in our body. One is called minister of fire, we talked before, remember on this side? One is called emperor of fire. The emperor of fire is Shao Yin. This is the second step of the Yin. The first step is the earth. <coughs> the second step is the Shao Yin, emperor of fire. Why is this fire coming back here? To do what to the earth or to the ice? To make this damp. To make the earth alive again. So Zhang Zhongjin put the Shao Yin here. Not, remember we said maybe here, maybe here, maybe somewhere. The Shao Yin fire is right in the middle of Tai Yin. It's not after the Tai Yin. Because you see where the Shao Yin start? The Shao Yin start where the Yang energy is finished. If no fire comes in, then the person doesn't wake up the next morning. So he puts fire here. Meaning he doesn't put here, but he realizes it. At midnight, when the yang energy is finished, we put fire and you make the earth alive again. But look what happened here. Right after that, starting the closing process, we call wind wood. We don't have much time. But what does the wind wood do? It closes. What does it close? It doesn't close the yang energy. It closes the yin function of the tai yin and shao yin. What is the Tai Yin and Shao Yin? What do they do? What is their function as we just explained? What does the Tai Yin and Shao Yin do? Remember the Yang energy is finished. Gets to midnight, no more energy. The sages says, if a person doesn't have Yang energy, then he dies. As long as a person has Yang energy, he cannot die. So now we say in the evening, the Yang energy gets less stored and stored and stored and stored. And stored. Finished. Store doesn't want to come out. Then we have the Tai Yin, Shao Yin. Started. You know, like in a car. You know, you have a battery, you put the car like this, you start it, there's a battery, electricity. After that, the car runs by itself. You know, it runs, it burns oils, and it runs the engine. But you need the battery, another energy, not the gasoline. You need the battery to start it. This. But now, let's say you're going to use the battery to run the car, right? Without gasoline, what's going to happen? Finish the electricity. Finish the electricity, the car can't move. The next day you can't start it even, battery finished. So you just use it to start the car. Then you finish with this, then the car runs with itself with gasoline. This is the Jue Yin, the closing of the Yin. You see how tight they are? The Tai Yin, the Shao Yin fire comes right in, the Jue Yin closes it right away, and then the Yang energy goes. Right? Opening, closing, another day. Closing, no more Yang energy, start it again. And finish the battery, the starting, the Shao Yin. Then the Yang energy goes another cycle. So what are the three Yin doing here? What would happen if we have no three Yin? No story. Right, no storage, or what will happen the next morning? Right, the yang goes into storage, doesn't want to come out. No battery to start the car. Dead. Ah, dead the next morning. So what, do, what can we say the three yins are doing? The three yins, uh, they are here to save our life. Meaning every night when you go to sleep, because of the three yin, you wake up the next morning. No three yin. Or, <coughs> this fire is finished. You don't wake up the next morning. Why is this young finished? Because we just have so much of it. But that's why we die at the end. When this runs out, then our time, remember at the beginning we talked about time? Our time is finished. We say the heavenly years. You have enough of this. This fire in the Chinese classics, they call Yuan Yang. Also call it Zhang Hua.
That's what they talk about in the classes. Yuan Yang Jianghua. When this Yuan Yang, this is different than this Yang, right? That every day we use the energy. This is different. This Yuan Yang is over here. Right? This Yuan Yang. Now, just because we don't have much time, I'm just going to jump all the way forward to explain to you that when a woman can't get pregnant, is because this Yuan Yang is missing. This Yuan Yang is called Jun Hua in the Shao Yin. The Shao Yin have two organs. One is the heart, one is the kidneys. Right? One is the heart, one is the kidneys. The kidney is fire, the, I mean the kidneys is water, the heart is fire. What is heart fire in Chinese medicine? Heart fire means a man, the spirit, right? The heart is the spirit, is the emperor, that's what they say in the classics. The heart is the spirit of a person. When a man wants a woman, and a woman wants a man, this is the heart fire. But then at night, they go, they try to get pregnant. This is the kidney water. In the Yellow Emperor, in the 12 officials, it says this is the official... I mean, that controls the reproductive organs, right? It's the kidneys. To get pregnant, you need both of them, or at least to get pregnant good, not like IVF. In IVF, you don't need any of this. But we don't know what the consequences are for a long time. If you want to preserve this time for many, many generations, then you do need the heart fire, and you do need the kidney water. So when a woman can't get pregnant, either the mother or the father have not enough yuan yang. Right? It's not this yang. Every day it looks great. Right? They're healthy. They're not sick. They could be sick, but not necessarily. Being sick, being tired, being this and that, we're talking about the three yangs. Being able to get pregnant, we're talking about the the emperor of fire, we're talking about the original yang. Original yang comes from the parents to the baby. We call this xian tian. Pre-heaven. Xian tian, the pre-heaven, comes from the parents to the baby. From the baby grows up, goes to his baby. From this baby grows up, goes to his baby. This is pre-heaven. Then we have post-heaven, right? Post-heaven is what we eat, what we drink, how we sleep, how we exercise. This is not necessarily what goes to the baby. Also, if you have a lot, if you have good post-heaven, then the person is healthier, then the pre-heaven is stronger, then the baby is stronger. That's why the mother should stay healthy, you know, eat well, exercise well, sleep well, because preserving this helps this. It's not that there's no connection. Three yin and three yang is one thing. It's not two different things. It's one thing. But what really goes to the baby is this yuan yang or zhen hua. True fire or original yang. This goes to the baby. When we talk about infertility in Chinese medicine, it is this problem. It is not poor ovarian function. It is not blood not going to the uterus. It is not fibroids. You know, today when I speak to other fertility specialists in Chinese medicine, I said, yeah, we treat PCOS, we treat the blood to the uterus, fibroids. This is all Western medicine. Where is Chinese, where is this clock? It's all over here. It's all disease. It's not syndrome. It's all disease. Syndrome is this. The heart fire can be missing, the kidney water can be missing, the original yang can be missing, but it could have a variety of issues. It could be that the taiyang has a problem. Because the taiyang has a problem, after a while the person gets tired, so the original yang gets tired. This is called differentiating the syndrome, then discussing the treatment. It's not automatically this is missing, use this point, finish. This is again this clock. It's not. 
it's understanding this whole picture to know how to solve it. So a patient comes to me, she has a tie-on problem because that she can't get pregnant. I mean, at the end the reason is here, but this is her problem. So I give her herbs or acupuncture to help this, then this recovers, then this starts to work good, then this gets strong, then she gets pregnant. Right? So it's not automatically I'm treating just this. Again, it's not this clock. It's rather understanding, knowing its essence, one sentence, and you summarize it all. Right? Meaning, this is the essence, like knowing this circular motion of Chinese medicine. Then you know what acupuncture, what herbs, which angle, which, before I wrote, Kaifan. Like for herbs, we say kind of fun, or make a prescription. It literally, it means open a direction. You know, Zhang Zhongjing and the Shang Han Lun, which direction? He said, like, what, I make herbs, or do acupuncture. It's like, which direction are we going? This direction, that direction. It's not automatically like it's an original yang, but this is why people can't get pregnant. If this is strong, if the original yang is strong, this is what's going to make the baby long life, full heavenly years. And if his original yang is strong, he's going to his baby make his full heavenly years. Right. Th this is what we need if we learn Chinese medicine as medicine of time, not space, not material. It's time. How can I treat this person so another thousand years go by? His grand, 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 grand kids are going to be very healthy because of what I did today. Like this is Chinese medicine. How is this going to happen? This original yang has to be strong. If the father and mother exchange the original yang, or what we call exchange water and fire, right? The fire is the heart, right? I'm the mother. We exchange the hard fire, right? We get married or not married, we love each other, this is the hard fire. And then we also have healthy kidney water with, uh, you know, man and woman coming together at night trying to make babies. Also healthy. The original yang is healthy. I'm not talking about baby coughing or not coughing. This baby has strong original yang for many, many generations. This is Chinese medicine treating infertility. So when I call my method the Hunyuan method, it's really no different than classical Chinese medicine. None of this did I make up by myself. But it is new. New why? Because most people practice Chinese medicine on this clock, on this modern science clock. <coughs> so when I say this is a new method, it is new today, but it's like 2000 years old, or three or four thousand years old. This is like the classical Chinese medicine. Some of colleagues that I have, very good practitioners, you know, they practice exactly the same. It's not called the Hunyuan method. You know, it's called classical Chinese medicine. Exactly the same. It's no no difference. So, so 9 p.m. is over here, right? This is where the tie-in starts. So we're telling patients, we give them recommendations, how to eat, how to sleep. It is very important, as much as possible, for a patient to sleep between 9 p.m. and midnight. Because this is the time. Uh, you see, this is 9 p.m. This is 12. This is 11. This is 1. Right? Um, the the Shao Yin starts here at 11. Right? The Shao Yin fire starts at 11. The Tai Yin starts at 9 p.m. So between 9 p.m. and midnight, that's where this all action that we just talked about, the earth start to get damp, which is the process of producing more blood. This happens here at 9 to 12. So if a patient goes to sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter if she sleeps until noon. She is forever deficient. Her original yang is forever deficient. If she sleeps from 9 p.m. until 1 a.m., she's fine. Four hours. Doesn't have to sleep eight hours. So the time, again, Chinese medicine is science of time. Very, very important. It's not how many hours 
or Western medicine say drink eight cups of water. It's, it's not. The time is very important. The time is from nine to midnight. And that's why I recommend patients to sleep there to try solving infertility. So this is one aspect of sleeping. Diet, other things, everything has this consideration. This is the basis. From here you need to, to go out and, and develop the rest. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.